The third criterion is lexical resource. This is worth 25% of your band score. Let's compare two candidates. One of them has achieved band 5 and the other has achieved band 8. The candidate with band 5 manages to talk about familiar and unfamiliar topics but uses vocabulary with limited flexibility. In other words, this person knows only the word big. He can't paraphrase this word by saying large, huge, tremendous, and so forth. Next, in addition to this, although this candidate can paraphrase some words, he does it with mixed success. In other words, some, he sometimes does it very well, however, he tends to make some mistakes, and all of these mistakes might irritate the examiner. Um, by contrast, the candidate who has achieved band 8 tends to use a wide vocabulary resource readily and flexibly to convey precise meaning. He can use collocations, phrases, idiomatic expressions, and so forth. This candidate uses less common and idiomatic vocabulary skillfully with occasional inaccuracies. He might make one or two mistakes, but most of his sentences are correct. Last but not least, this candidate can paraphrase words and phrases effectively and effortlessly as required and therefore he can impress the examiner and get a high bend in the speaking section. Alright, now let's focus on lexical resource. In order to achieve a high bend in the speaking section, make sure to use advanced vocabulary and collocations. Don't use super simple words or slang. Believe me, you will never impress the examiner if you use slang. So now, let's focus on advanced vocabulary and let me show you how to paraphrase basic words and how to make them more advanced and complicated. Okay, so now let's analyze uh, the first sentence. People can make a lot of friends if they speak to each other over the internet. Now let's focus on uh, the second sentence, which is more advanced. Online users have the potential to establish friendships with a significant number of other social media followers. So instead of saying people, you want to say online users. Why? Because we are talking about the internet. Next, instead of saying can, you can see have the potential to. It sounds really perfect. Next, instead of saying make a lot of friends, you could say establish friendships with. And instead of saying if they, if they speak to each other over the internet, you could say a significant number of other social media followers. So as you can see, there is a, a big difference between both of these responses. Even though this candidate, for example, has been able to answer uh, his question, but the vocabulary used in the first sentence is totally different from that in the second sentence. So if you really want to achieve a high bend, make sure to use only advanced vocabulary. Okay, now let's focus on the second example and let's analyze the difference between basic vocabulary and advanced vocabulary. Let's look at the first sentence. The government should save animals which are weak and can die very soon. Well, uh, all of these words are very simple and therefore this candidate might not impress the examiner. Now let's focus on the second sentence. One of the government's responsibilities is to protect endangered species. Or, one of the government's responsibilities 
is to protect the species on the verge of extinction. So instead of saying the government should, you could say one of the government's responsibilities is to. Instead of saying save, you could say protect. Instead of saying animals which are weak and can die very soon, it's better to say endangered species or the species on the verge of extinction. All right, now let's focus on the third example. Now let's compare again basic vocabulary with advanced vocabulary. Let's look at the first sentence. That's why if these children read many books every day, they will be very, very clever and it is very good. So what is it? It's a baby talk. Only primary school children can speak at this level. Now let's look at more advanced um, vocabulary and phrases. Um, so here we've got the sentence, therefore those children who tend to read books on a daily basis are likely to become highly intelligent. So lots of candidates always use this phrase that's why, that's why. It sounds really basic. You don't want to say the word that's why, you want to say the word therefore. Okay, why? Because it's more academic. Next, instead of saying if these children read many books every day, you want to say those children who tend to read books on a daily basis. In this case, tend to basically means usually, who usually read. Instead of saying every day, it's better to say on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, on a regular basis. Next, instead of saying they will be very, very clever, it's better to say are likely to become highly intelligent. When you say are likely to, that means might become. You are not 100% sure, but you're trying to guess, okay? Next, instead of saying very clever, it's better to say highly intelligent. So use highly instead of the word very. So you can say highly intelligent, highly punctual, highly responsible.